I just finished covering a little bit about prayer and fasting. Now we're going to cover about praise and worship. If you look at David's life, and you look at Elijah, and you look, and you even look at Jesus and other people, worship is a very important part. And I'm like, what? A lot of people are like, what do you mean by worship? I'm talking about actually sitting down. Standing up, getting on your hands and knees, however the Holy Spirit leads you to, or you feel that you should do, and actually sing songs to the Lord. And a lot of people sit here and tell me, I don't have a good voice, um, I sound like a, uh, you know, a broken record. Well, you're not actually singing for yourself, and you're not really singing for other people, but you're actually singing for God. And, and in this moment, you're supposed to continually sing to God. Now, I know in my case, at least for me, and at least looking at Daniel, when things were happening during the trials, just like the um, Casting Crown song, it's not just the song. Praise you in the storm is not just a song. It's something we've been told to do by God. It says to continually pray and be adamant before God. If you look at the 113th Psalm, you know, I will pray and meditate upon his precepts. And he says that over and over and over again. David is the best example. And the Psalms mean songs that people sang. So David sang most of this stuff he wrote. Did you ever think about that? David sang most of the songs that he wrote. And why is that? Because he understood his relationship with himself and the music he was capable of doing coming out of his mouth or coming out of the things that he could play. He understood that he was a vessel being used to bring worship to God. And it wasn't about him, but it was about, about God. For all we know, David might, may have sounded, oh, yeah, he may have sounded horrible. We don't know. We really don't know. And he was great with praying, too. But here's the thing. There's two things that we know. His prayers and his worship were very, very connected. He could sing praises to God, and by the end of it, he was in a prayer mode. And if you go to church, a lot of people... A lot of churches will have three to seven songs lasting anywhere from seven minutes to an hour. I've been to both types of churches. The seven minutes and the hour. And depending on what you believe in, what you're going to do. If you're going through a bad time, you know, that whole pray without ceasing, what you would used to do 15 minutes in the morning... Or if you sing to God, because I, I wonder how many people do this. How many people, I know most people pray, how many people actually sing to God outside of going to church? I'll ask it again. How many people sing praises to God outside of church? How many people do it when, when your mom died? Like right when you walk out of the hospital and you watch your mom die. How many people do it after, uh, you know, someone might have got beaten up or, or something, something, something other, you know, bad thing might have happened. You know? I know somebody who did. Stephen. When he, they were stoning him to death, he prayed for them, for the, those who were stoning him. He said... Lord, do not hold this charge against them. That's one of the greatest examples, I think, ever in the Bible of someone praying for their enemies as they were killing them and harming you know? them. I mean, think about that. <clears throat> a good example also, which is not really singing, but a, an example of trying to help someone, is Voice of the Martyrs talked about this guy who hands a Bible to the person who killed his wife. You know, there's extreme examples. 
But they, these examples are out there because that's what God really wants. God wants us, honestly, that when we lose things and we are in trials and tribulations, they don't want it to be just some really great song that Casting Crown sings, praise you in the storm. That's what God really wants us to do. God really wants us to be singing and praying to Him at a continuous moment. Uh, good examples, but some of them are funny. You can put a CD in the car and you can sing while you're going around. You can sing praises when you're in the bathroom, or you can pray, depending on what's going on. While you're cooking, you can pray or sing. <clears throat> I mean, there are different, different things that you can do at different points of your life. And these are some of the steps that you have to do. Um, you know, you have to do these things. You know? You think about this. He who conquers others is strong. But he who conquers himself is mighty. And I mean this as when you learn to let your, your flesh, and you do, as we talked about in the interview, I die daily. This is how you die daily. You have to pray continuously. You have to read the word and learn the word and let it, as Psalm, the psalmist says, I will meditate. Upon these precepts. I will learn what this means. And if you don't understand what something means. You need to find someone to talk to about this. You need to communicate. With those that are that are out there. And in your life. Some kind of message. Some kind of direction. Some kind of plan. That can help you get to where you really need to be. And to do this. Mission recovery. As we're calling it. You have to get rid of fear. And fear seems to be this big thing after you've been in an attack. Either you're afraid of what God's going to do to you. Or you're afraid of what man's going to do to you. Because when you fall and you backslide, a lot of times in our lives, a lot of times in our lives, we end up putting a false guilt upon ourselves that the Holy Spirit hasn't even put there. That gets us so guilty that we're afraid to talk to God. We're afraid to talk to people. And we don't even want to talk and do anything for ourselves. That's when it's gone beyond a rebuke, beyond a repentance moment. It's a pity party that has gone overboard. To the point where you are disabled to focus, do your normal daily things, or even maybe you can do your normal things, but you just don't want nothing to do with God. You stop going to church. And in this moment when you stop having any form of church, and church is where two or more people are gathered, you become useless to yourself and you become useless to the kingdom of God. You know? Ezekiel 37, 23. I will save them from all their sinful backsliding. I will cleanse them. They will be my people and I will be their God. How many of us think that today? That God is here to help us. He, he sent his son because he knows we can't do it. And if you're in a church that is holding you back and you can't communicate when you're having problems, then you got to find another one. We're going to talk about that next when we return. <laughs>